Mercado Libre has been a grand slam holding for its long-term investors. A $10,000 investment in this company at its IPO is currently worth more than $350,000. But Mercado Libre stock is currently down more than 50% from its recent high. Here's why we think that right now is a great time to open up a position in Mercado Libre. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Thanks to Common Stock for sponsoring today's video. As of the time of this recording, both Brian and I own Mercado Libre stock. Brian, Mercado Libre is roughly a $50 billion company today. Mercado Libre's mission statement is to democratize commerce and finance in Latin America. This is simple, inspirational, and optional. I love it. I love that mission statement too, but how do they do it? Well, the company started out with an online marketplace to buy and sell goods, Mercado Libre. Then they created a payment solution, Mercado Pago. From there, they moved on to logistics with Mercado Envios, and now they have a credit solution, which is Mercado Credito. Yeah, there's a lot going on under the hood. So here's a quick review of the business segments that this company has. First is their marketplace, which as Brian said, is kind of like the eBay of Latin America. Second is Mercado Envios, which is their fulfillment network, which is kind of like fulfillment by Amazon. Those two businesses currently account for about two thirds of revenue. Next is their payment solution business, which facilitates transactions between businesses and consumers. And then fourth is their financing division, which makes things like loans to small businesses. The payment solution business and the financing business are about one third of total revenue. Now it's worth going over how all of these segments are doing. This first one shows Mercado Libre's gross merchandise volume over the past two years. And as you can see, it is growing at a rapid pace. Another key metric to watch is items shipped via Mercado Envios, which is the company's fulfillment network. Last year, the company did almost a billion packages shipped and the growth here has been exponential. Mercado Pago, which has really taken over as the growth engine is in incredible. If you look here, that red area, that's the amount of money changing hands using Mercado Libre's website. But the yellow area is where people are using Mercado Pago for things that have nothing to do with Mercado Libre, like paying for gas or groceries. This is quickly becoming the de facto digital payment option in Latin America. Lastly, the company's credit division, Mercado Credito, is also seeing a huge uptick in sales to customers. Now, even though the company is well known in Latin America, it is spending aggressively in sales and marketing right now, it eats up about 50% of gross profit. Overall, we think that customer demand for these companies' product lines is very strong and relatively recession-proof. However, in a prolonged downturn, we would expect downward pressure on the company's top line. And finally, given the dynamics of all four of those business segments we mentioned, the vast majority of this revenue is recurring. Turning to Moat, we think that Mercado Libre has built an enviable one. The primary way that it protects itself is through the network effect. The more buyers that join its platform, the more that attracts sellers. And the verse is also true. Since Mercado Libre has emerged as the top dog in this space, we think that the network effect is very powerful. But we also think that switching costs are very high. We need to remember that Mercado Pago is usually the first digital payment option that many of these users have ever had because Mercado Libre is focused on the underbanked. Once they get them in the system, they are loath to switch to a different digital payment option. There's also an argument to me that the company has low cost production through its Mercado Envios product when compared to its competitors such as Amazon. The company has spent aggressively over the last few years to build this out and it's going to continue doing so. We think that provides it with a durable competitive advantage. You could also make an argument that the brand value is very high. If someone wants to buy something or needs to adopt a digital payment solution, Mercado Libre and Mercado Pago are household names. Finally, we also think that you could make the argument that they have counter positioning on the Mercado Pago side versus versus traditional banks. As Brian mentioned before, a huge swath of the Latin American population is unbanked and Mercado Pago is the first bank that they choose. That is something that differentiates them from the competition and they would have a hard time matching it. However, we don't think that that advantage is very strong. That said, if you put all of these factors together, this is an extremely wide moat business and its moat is expanding. Turning to the company's financials, this has been a top line growth story for many years and the top line growth has been huge in the last three years, growing at a 75% rate, which which is just incredible given this company's scale. Turning to gross margin, over the last year, it came in at 40%. This isn't the strongest, but you'll see this number bounce around a lot depending upon where the revenue is coming from and how much the company is spending on its newer products. 
Turning to net income, this figure also bounces around a lot. Over the last year, it has been profitable on a net income basis. Before that, it was unprofitable. However, given the stage that this company is in, we don't think that net income is the best way to judge this company's profitability. Free cash flow can also bounce around quite a bit. One of the reasons that it boomed so much in 2020 is because business accelerated and the company couldn't keep up its spending plans to match with it. That said, the important thing to note here is that it is bringing in, not losing cash on a consistent consistent basis. The company's balance sheet is in good, but not great shape. It has $2.8 billion in cash and about $2.2 billion in debt. That gives it plenty of financial flexibility to execute its growth plan. Overall, returns on capital are low, but that's to be expected given where Mercado Libre is in its growth story. Turning to management, Marcos Galperin is the founder and CEO since starting this business more than 20 years ago. He has been at the helm and driving this company's success the entire way up. With over 3,000 reviews on Glassdoor.com, employees give the company four and a half out of five stars and Galperin also earns great marks. Meanwhile, insiders here own about 8% of the business, which is currently worth about $4 billion at current prices. The majority of that is through CEO and founder Galperin, but that does give us confidence that management does have some serious skin in the game. In terms of optionality, Mercado Libre is in rare company. This company has rolled out so many new products and we've covered the four core ones, but it has new irons in the fire as well, like a business to business solution and advertising. Mercado Libre is currently focused on growing its top line and not on its bottom line. For that reason, we think that there's a lot of pent up operating leverage in this business once it chooses to focus on profitability. So how big is that opportunity? Well, you should take this number with a grain of salt, but when you add all the pieces together, it could be worth around $1 trillion of which the company has captured less than 1%. Meanwhile, Mercado Libre has accomplished all this without having to lean on acquisitions. So the vast majority of its revenue growth has been organic in nature. But how has Mercado Libre been as an investment? Despite falling recently, it has been a 35 bagger since coming public and it has smashed the S&P 500 over the last five years. The company has a mixed track record with meeting Wall Street's estimates and has missed in two of the last four quarters. And given the spending it is doing right now to chase that opportunity, the company is not focused on returning cash to shareholders. Sounds good so far, right? Well, let's turn to risks. So there are a bunch to keep in mind. First and foremost is competition. Mercado Libre has to worry about local competitors in Brazil, such as PagSeguro and StoneCo. It also has to worry about big e-commerce players such as Amazon. And more recently, C Limited has taken a shine to Latin America and is trying to encroach on the company's turf. So far, the competition has not dented Mercado Libre's growth, but there's no guarantee that that will remain the case moving forward. Second, there's a lot of moving pieces here. And if you don't know where to look or what to watch out for, it can be difficult to understand the company's financials. Third, there are several geopolitical risks that are worth mentioning here. A few years ago, the company was operating in Venezuela, but has since had to pull out of that country. Moreover, because the company gets the majority of its revenue from Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico, inflation and economic uncertainty are going to be constant things for investors to monitor. Now, closely tied to that, there are outside forces that can affect results as well. The main one being foreign currency exchange rates, which can be a real drag on the company's results. And finally, even though this stock has fallen hugely from its 52-week high, in no world is this company considered cheap today. Shares are currently trading for about seven times sales. That's a high number in absolute terms, although when viewed historically over the last 10 years, it's towards the bottom end of its range. On a price to free cash flow ratio, the company is currently trading at 138 times. That makes sense given that this company is spending hugely on capital expenditures, so this isn't the best metric to judge the company's value. Now, why is it trading so expensive? Look how this company's revenue has grown over the last 10 years and how this company's gross profit has grown over the last 10 years. It's clear to us that investors are expecting continued high growth for many years to come. So now that we've announced that we'll be making a purchase of Mercado Libre for our portfolio, what are we going to watch? Well, the first thing is free cash flow. Now, we don't expect it to be going consistently up and to the right, but we want to see it working that way over time. This can be lumpy, but it needs to be positive. Second, keep an eye on total payment volume. We want to see this number continue to scream higher. It gives us a sense that it's Mercado Pago fintech solution continues to catch on with its consumers. And finally, to make sure that that core marketplace business is doing well, we're going to follow gross merchandise volume or the value of all the stuff trading hands via their website. 
So how did Mercado Libre score on our investing checklist? The answer there is great. On mine, it got a 78, which was well into my investable category. And the entire reason that I chose this as our investment for the week is because a score of a 15 is the highest a company has ever gotten. It broke my scale. I consider this a very anti-fragile company. So there you have it. In the next couple of days, we'll be making our third purchase in our new real money portfolio. If you want to follow along, you can do so by following us on Common Stock, and there's a link in the video description to do so. Also, we wanted to let you know that Common Stock has agreed to make a $250 cash payment to whoever makes the most insightful comment on the slides that we share about this video. Do you have constructive criticism for us? Do you have more information to share about Mercado Libre? Is there something that you think we're overlooking? Let us know by commenting in the post that we do in Common Stock about this video, and you could win $250 in cash. The winner will be chosen and announced one week after this video goes live. Brian's out.